Today on the Daily Dose Special Edition, an American air crew's miraculous final flight. Having survived eight emergency landings and one shootdown at Vipitino, Italy, the seemingly luckless B-24 air crew of 10 brave men hit the ultimate luckless lottery on the final day of the air war in Europe when heavy, accurate, and intense German anti-aircraft fire over Linz, Austria, knocked out three of their four engines. The ship was a mess, replete with a shot-out radio and oxygen system, a punctured and drained number four fuel tank, a damaged right landing gear, and a top turret gunner wounded yet lucky to be alive. After the crew gutted the plane of all non-essential dead weight, including parachutes, pilot Bill Shreve dropped out of formation before he and his crew lost consciousness at altitude, desperately scanning the Hungarian countryside for any survivable place for a near dead stick landing. What they found was an abandoned German fighter base at Peck, Hungary, with a 2,500-foot runway, which immediately posed a significant problem for a heavy bomber accustomed to landing on airstrips twice its length. Knowing he had no other alternative, Shreve landed the plane over a B-17 heavy bomber that had just ground looped when it too ran out of tarmac, obliging Shreve and co-pilot Bob Carter to stand on the brakes for a crash landing at the opposite end of the airfield. While crash landing survival rates aboard B-24 Liberators stood at a miserably low percentile throughout World War II, all 10 men aboard survived, including navigator Jerry Harriman, fill-in bombardier Frank Dietrich, flight engineer Cal Page, radio operator Wally Anderson, and gunners Carl Nickler, Don Wood, James Herndon, and Fred Whiteman. The crew was immediately set upon by allied Russian soldats who had invaded Hungary two months earlier, taking the weary airmen to the Nader Grand Hotel for a much-needed meal and a good night's sleep. The next day, the downed airmen's odyssey turned surreal when they were given three days worth of food, consisting of six loaves of black bread, 10 lengths of smoked sausage, and one slab of raw sow belly. Their escort was a Russian over-lieutenant who resembled Stalin so closely that the Americans nicknamed him Joe. They boarded a train packed with Russian soldats returning to their mother country, who soon began pouring full glasses of wine for the Americans, offering toast after toast until the airmen became quite intoxicated. After Joe had consumed an equal quantity of booze, he began hitting on a local Hungarian woman, which caused several fights to break out among the Russians and the Hungarians aboard. In all their drunken rivalry, Joe and the airmen missed their getting off point, forcing them to bivouac in a bombed out rail station 50 miles in the wrong direction, listening all night long to frontline artillery fire at the nearby Austrian border. After several days of traveling by horse cart through heavily bombed out Hungarian cities, the wayward airmen finally hitched a ride with a Russian artillery convoy heading back toward Russia. Frank Dietrich wrote of the convoy, the drivers were well loaded with wine and we drove at 60 miles an hour down bad roads. Our truck was in a bad way and soon we stopped to repair a flat tire. The tools were taken out, a five gallon can of wine and a chessboard. While the driver worked on the tire, we shot at a nearby telephone pole with all the weapons we could find, drank wine, played chess until the Russians began a rousing game of tossing live hand grenades. A short distance ahead, a jeep was also being repaired. It was dusk and soon became rather dark. At this point, the Russian repairing the jeep was in need of more light to complete his work, so he simply set fire to a barn a short distance away. Light was plentiful after that. After days of misadventure, the airmen finally arrived into Odessa, Russia on May 7, 1945, one day before the formal end of war in Europe. 53 years later, Frank Dietrich and his daughter Donny Bastiani would return to Peck, Hungary in search of where his plane went down, and after hailing a taxi at the Peck airport for the drive to the same hotel where Dietrich was billeted after the crash, the taxi driver inquired in broken English about their reasons for coming to Hungary. When his passengers explained their objective, the driver pulled off the roadway in quite animated excitement, 
insisting that his mother had taken a picture of the bomber as it came into land. Undone by the small world serendipity of the moment, the driver drove to his mother's house, where she gave the picture to Frank and Donnie, closing out a vivid chapter in the lives of 10 brave men. And there you have it, the final flight of an American aircrew, today on the Daily Dose Special Edition. If you like learning something new every day, subscribe to the Daily Dose on YouTube or sign up for emails at dailydosenow.com.